Amen. Peace of Christ be with you. Welcome to 2020, Hope College. Welcome back. So excited to see you. So lonely without you. I love seeing everyone come back and making connections. And just a quick notice that if you want to make some connections and see each other some more, tonight at 8 o'clock we'll have our first ever Groovin' in the Great Room that will be taking place. So if you're looking for what, something to do tonight, see some friends, connect together, come on out to the Boltman Center at the Great Room and have some fellowship. So good to see you. Hey, I want to give a couple welcome um, students that are coming back from a semester abroad who weren't here first semester, let's welcome them back to chapel. It's so good. And we've also, we've also got some students that are joining us mid-semester, transferring some other places. Welcome to Hope College. We're so glad that you're here. So nice. Uh, well, how was break? Was it good? Did you have a good break? I had a great break. I want to show you some pictures of my break. Can I got? Yeah. So I started out, we went down to Florida. You'll notice that we have ponchos on. It was the wettest place on earth. Earth. It rained the whole time. But my friends, go to Disneyland World when it rains, because the lines are shorter. <laughs> so great. I took my son. We did some Jedi Knight training. Call it, yeah, it was awesome. Anyone see Star Wars? Yeah, we'll talk about that later. It was a great time. Christmas morning, wrappings everywhere. No one got in arguments. Everyone liked what they got. It was a very successful time for the Johnsons. I don't know if you know this, but it was so sunny in Holland, Michigan. It was a Christmas miracle. This was, I think, two days after Christmas, and it was like 62 degrees. This is my, um, let's see if this is at my point of work. That's my dog, E.B. That's my dog, Bennett. We're out on the shores of Lake Michigan, just enjoying the sun. The next day, it's bittersweet time. We go from the beach, we go to skiing. Um, yeah, you can see all that fake snow, and then like Michigan in the background. Yeah, it was awesome. And then, you know, we got to root the home team on. Go Hope. So we're at the basketball team. So a lot, of my, a lot of my break was just being with my family, being local, being in my place. We did a lot of hosting. This is my daughter, Ella, um, one of her best friends, Maggie. And it was just a time for us just to be together as a family and to connect. And that was my Christmas. It was good. But Christmas is over. Break is over. And now we step into a new semester a new year, we step into a new decade. And I don't know about you, but anytime I have a new beginning, it, it ponders me to ask, it invites me to ask some questions, the questions that are kind of beneath the soul. We do these resolutions at the beginning of a new year, and those are really important. We, we set goals, what do we want to accomplish? But all of those things that we set goals for and we want to accomplish are really connected to the deeper things, to who we really want to be. What do you want to be about? What do you want to pursue? And it raises the question, where do we begin? Where do we begin to answer those questions as we step into a new semester, a new year, a new decade? I love beginnings because the beginning is an invitation to start over. A beginning is a blank slate, a, a fresh start. It's a new day that's undefined. We don't yet know what will happen. This is the beginning, my friends. And I love beginnings because you get this opportunity now to think and ask about this question, where do you want to begin this semester? And maybe some of you are coming back from break, and maybe it wasn't all easy. Maybe it was hard. Maybe it was great. I don't know. But now that you're back into a new semester, a new year, a new decade, where do you want to begin? Your life to pursue what you're really about, what you're called to be about, what you were made for. Where do we begin with that? I love beginnings because it invites us to start over, but I think why I like beginnings is that starting over is also connected to the very nature of God and to the gospel. Because the gospel is always, always, always an invitation to start anew every single day. It's a big claim, I understand, but... That claim is, is rooted from what I understand by Scripture. 
by who God is and what God does. As we step into a new semester, a new year, a new decade, I want you to take a couple verses with you and just groove them into your soul like the best music pressed into vinyl. And every single day, put the needle on and let it play over and over and over again until you can sing its gospel harmony. Hear these words from the prologue of John, the first verse, verse one through five. Hear these words from the book we love, the bush that burns and is never consumed. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing has come into being, and what has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This semester, we're going to be back in John. In chapels, we're going to be doing the book of glory. There's two sections to John, the book of signs, chapters 1 through 11, and then book of glory, 12 through 21. We're going to be there in chapel starting Wednesday. And at the gathering, we're going to be exploring the consequence of this prologue of John, grooving this deep into our lives so that we can understand its large, dramatic, and consequential message. But as we begin a new semester, a new year, a new decade, I want to draw our attention to the very beginning of where John begins. Because in there is a key that can unlock us from our, from our confined world and launch us into that expansive, wide-open country of salvation. John wants us to begin at the beginning, at the primordial at the existential. He wants us to start where all things come into being. And you're probably figuring this out by now, but life is a series of beginnings over and over and over again. You begin to see. You begin to speak. You begin to crawl. That turns into beginning to walk, into beginning to run. You have school. You begin school, and you begin relationships. You begin college, and God willing, you'll begin a day after college. Maybe someday you'll begin a new job, or maybe you'll begin a marriage. Maybe someday you'll begin retirement, but how you travel through life, the beginnings never end. We're always and ever beginning, which is good news because we are, as Christians, always and ever beginning with God. To be alive is always to beginning, and so I want to ask again, where do we begin? Where do we begin in such a way that our deepest desire, our chief identity can be satisfied. In the second movement of the four quartets in East Coker, T.S. Eliot writes, in my beginning is my end. Beginnings are important. Where we begin begins to set the trajectory of where we want to go. And my friends, it's 2020. It's a new year, a new semester, a new decade. Where do you want to go? In my beginning is my end. What is your end? John wants to remind us, John wants to remind us of this simple truth, and this is just the simple message as we launch into this semester together. Hear the word again from the book we love, the bush that burns and is never consumed. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Where do we begin? I think it has something to do with that first verse. I think it has something to do with the word. In the beginning, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Who is this word that we are called to begin with? Who begins everything? It's God. It's God. It's a God who will be revealed through this gospel and through the canon of scripture as a person with a name, a face, a body, a God who enters time and space. Later in the prologue, it will say this, that the word became flesh and lived among us. One of the most dramatic claims in all of literature, in all of history, God takes on human form. The immensity of all that is eternal becomes finite in human flesh, localized in time and place. The word 
begins it all. And where do we begin? I'm calling us to begin with the Word, this Word who is God, this Word that is revealed as God among us as the name Jesus Christ. And the good news, my friends, the gospel news is that this God is not abstract. Abstraction, you'll learn, is the enemy of the Christian faith. This God is personal, relational. Eugene Peterson writes that true spirituality, Christian spirituality, gets the attention off of ourselves and focuses on another, namely Jesus. Where do you begin 2020? A new semester, a new year, a new decade. Where do you begin so that you end up where you want to go? Begin with the word. Who is God? Who is Jesus? Who's calling you right now to a fresh start? A do-over. A new possibility with an undefined future in him. Begin with Jesus, this God, this word, and you will be launched into that wide open country and you will explore wonders and experience a community and an intimacy you have always desired because it was what you were made for. It is what you are designed for. It is what you are called for. Where do we begin? Begin with Jesus. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace.